This is Japan, where the old wonders meet futuristic marvels. A country with a captivating blend of ancient customs and cutting edge technology. Japan has been noticed internationally for a shocking homelessness rate of 0%. Yes, fellows, zero. At first look, this may seem like a stunning statistic. But if you scratch beneath the surface, there is a terrible secret of how many Japanese people don't have a roof over their heads. The homeless headcount in Japan fell from a whopping 25,000 in 2003 to only about 3,000 in 2022, with a rather dramatic exponential decrease in the past 20 years. That is only 0.003% of all the people living in Japan which is practically null compared to countries such as the United States, which has a 0.2% homelessness rate. But how did that happen, exactly? Various reasons contribute to this low percentage of homelessness. So, first, the Japanese culture has its toolbox full to drive these displaced people to their misery. Tourists frequently notice that, even when they meet homeless people, they rarely see someone soliciting money in Japan. Wonder why that is? Well, culturally speaking, homeless people are usually quite looked down upon and are often so full of shame themselves that they tend to hide away. So, visible or not, a homeless Japanese person will always stay out of your hair as much as possible, living his life as an outcast. They estimate it to be between 2,500 and 3,000. And that would not surprise me if it was even more than that. Because where Itsuko and I have seen and Meijo Cohen and Shirakawa Cohen and up along under the underpass, there's a lot of homeless that even if it was an official tally or census, they wouldn't want to be included in on it. Doesn't that seem a bit excessive? Newsflash, it gets worse. Japanese stringent laws make it extremely difficult to be homeless in Japan. Asking for money on the streets is highly punishable in Japan, and you could wind up in jail. And it's not just begging that's a criminal offense. There are also strict rules that were not intended to limit homelessness, but did so nevertheless. Drugs and alcohol, for example, are illegal in Japan, and trying to find or use them in Japan is like shooting yourself in the foot. To spell it out more clearly, you'll have to get involved with gangsters only to get yourselves a gram of weed. That's why only 1.6% of all Japanese people have ever had a drug use history. So, unlike countries such as the US, where homeless people are often drug addicts who need rehab, Japan's houseless nomads are very much sober. Similar to drug addiction, psychiatric issues are another common ailment in homeless people all around the globe. But surprise, Japan has found a way to prevent mentally ill people from ending up on the streets, admitting them to psychiatric hospitals. You'd be baffled to hear that Japan has 269 mental hospital beds for every 100,000 people, which is 10 times as high as the US. Does it seem oddly high to you? If so, you're not the only one. While it may seem like Japan's healthcare system is quite efficient, the tale is the same as the homelessness rate. In the end, it is just numbers on paper. Japan also has one of the most atrocious suicide rates, unfortunately. In one sense, the rapid institutionalization system results in fewer homeless individuals. Almost one in four Japanese people have thought about suicide. Globally, Japan ranks third in the world in suicide rates, which is the number of suicides per 100,000 people. However, it also leads to the gory and unsettling reality of people resorting to death as a way out, which is a big issue in and of itself. But that's the topic for another video. Stay tuned and subscribe for more videos like these in the future. Here, it's worth applauding the Japanese housing policies, which have helped curb homelessness. It's pretty easy to buy property and get a house in Japan compared to Western democracies like the United States. Homeless shelters aside, Al Jazeera News reported that Japan now also has cheap districts called Doyagai for displaced males to house in. So even if people are poor, these areas help them get off the streets and live more respectably. Now, you're probably wondering the same things we are. On paper, Japan appears to have solved homelessness, mental health issues, housing concerns, and even drug addiction. But is the ground reality the same as the official numbers? 
According to an NGO that advocates for marginalized people in Japan, activists count about three times as many dispossessed people as the official numbers. Why is that? No matter how much Japan is underreporting their homelessness rates, even if it's like literally 10 times more, this is something I've talked about a lot. And if you have visible homelessness, that means you have so much more invisible homelessness. We'll have to go back in time to figure that one out. In the 2000s, Japan faced a severe economic crisis, resulting in considerable job losses for the poor and middle classes. Companies laid off several employees, and with no new jobs in the market, they fell below the poverty line. And it wasn't just this. Even as early as right after the Second World War, daily wage and part-time laborers started finding it harder to get work every day, which meant they were soon out of work. And with an influx of technology, daily wage labor became a no-go. Over the years, the numbers did decrease. However, several people have yet to recover from generational homelessness. These people fail to pay rent or even feed themselves for that matter. Eviction is a real fear for many people in Japan nowadays. And since they neither beg nor bother others, most barely have anything to survive. What makes matters much worse is that the Japanese government misunderstood the situation. Since winning the bid to organize the Olympic Games in 2013, Japan has been firm and intolerable towards those living in rough conditions. Parks were secured and illuminated at night to discourage people from sleeping there. The authorities removed tents and benches near train stations and Olympic venues. And by the time the Olympic Games happened in 2021, there was no sign of people suffering from homelessness on the streets. Because they're really doing nothing for the homeless. There's no shelter, there's no day center, there's no place that they even offer the homeless to go wash their feet. So, what we want to do is, is not help the homeless, but we want to create a day center where we can help the homeless regain their lives and regain their independence. There were several petitions for the government to accommodate these people, especially when the pandemic surfaced and caused the games to reschedule but they only got so far. There will be more about that later in the video. Even more, almost 92% of these are older men over 50. With few jobs available, Japanese companies now prefer to hire young and motivated individuals under 35. Hence, ageism is contributing to the homelessness demographics in Japan. Yamada, 64, told BBC News on the streets of Tokyo that he was evicted not once, not twice, but three times. It started with eviction notices plastered all over his belongings and ended with the authorities telling him to hide during the days of the Olympics. So essentially, no one is trying to lift these people out of poverty. With no one else to look out for them and nowhere to go, these invisible homeless people of Japan began to turn to the internet or manga cafes for their survival. Are you as perplexed as we are? Rightfully so, because this is a clever and unique approach. Let's dig a little deeper. Sato, 53, and on the streets of Osaka, mentioned how he resorted to living in manga cafes after losing his job and facing financial difficulties. These cafes provide small private booths for customers to read comics, watch movies, or browse the internet. He'd stay at these cafes a few hours at a time, but it wasn't long before the cost of these cafes began to pile up. So to turn his situation around, Sato resorted to shelters and job training that welfare organizations provided. With their help, Sato got a job as a janitor and a small one-bedroom apartment. Unfortunately, Sato's story isn't a unique one. Many more people on the streets of Japan have been unable to avail welfare programs. Most homeless individuals in Japan, just like Sato, have part-time jobs like trash pickup, etc. These jobs do not pay well enough for them to afford housing, but enough that they can afford a few hours in an internet cafe. Internet cafe owners would let people from the streets in, let them use the bathrooms, and work in exchange for a few hours to sleep inside every night. Over the years, this culture has grown so much that over 4,000 invisible destitute now live in internet cafes, according to a 2018 survey. That is more than the total number of homeless people that Japan claims to have. But these cyber cafes are a very temporary solution for these people. Of these people that live in cyber cafes, that they have cyber cafes that are open 24 hours a day, 
in Japan and they have like these little cubicles that you take in there and they're just online on their computer and they have all their things there and that's where they live. And they shower and they go back to their little cubicle. Why not keep hiding this way? The short answer is the COVID-19 pandemic. Not only were the Olympics postponed by a year due to the pandemic, but there was also a worldwide lockdown. As a result, internet cafes closed down, leaving homeless individuals nowhere to go. The government did step up and housed them in cramped shelters temporarily. But the problem remains that living like you don't exist in your own country isn't a way to live. These marginalized people stay susceptible to every unpredictability there is out there. From tsunamis to earthquakes to malnourishment, their way of life is quite dangerous and unpredictable. During Typhoon Hagibis in 2019, which killed over 60 people, homeless refugees got trapped by it because they could reach a shelter in time. And that's just one instance. There have been many others. Of course, there is credit due to organizations like Sukuroi Tokyo Fund and Shio no Michi, who are trying to sincerely improve the living standards of these people by getting them jobs, food, and cheap homes. These organizations hire homeless people for work and give them a sense of financial independence that they never knew existed. However, the number of these nonprofits is significantly less than the number of homeless persons, and independent organizations can only house so many people. Also, these folks are so well hidden and blended that it's impossible to tell them apart in internet cafes. So, it's more of a government-level problem than a societal one. Unless their approach to hiding away the homeless changes, this whole ordeal would not change much if we're being blunt. Currently, Japan's homeless persons exceeded the government's claim of 3,000. With no access to healthcare, housing, or income options, the invisible destitute of Japan now have very little to live for. And the problem doesn't end there. About 15.7% of all Japanese people earn barely above minimum wage due to the stagnant state of the economy. That means that while they do have houses, there isn't going to be a change in their finances anytime soon. Thus, the dark secret of the Japanese homelessness rate is that many people in the country barely cut its poverty line, and this will only get worse given the shame and taboo attached to homelessness alone. While displaced persons is a complicated issue with too much at play, Japan needs active poverty-reducing efforts rather than sweeping the matter under the rug. So today, we ask you this. Do you think Japan's 0% statistic is an achievement or a curse? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in our upcoming videos.